Hi and welcome to another video update from the Fire Brigade Union here in the Union's head office in Kingston, London. We're joined by General Secretary Matt Rack to discuss the ongoing pay dispute within the Fire and Rescue Service. Now Matt, the Union is currently running a pay dispute following a offer from the employers of 2% which you called an insult. Um, and now the Chiefs have started to make comment on it. There seems to be a suggestion by some Chief Fire Officers that somehow National Joint Council and free collective bargaining is to blame for what is effectively a pay crisis in the fire service. I mean, what is your initial comment with that? I always find it a bit uh, amusing, Sam, when chiefs intervene in these debates because the truth is there's no getting away from the fact that for the past decade, and more than a decade, chief officers have sat back while funding to the fire service has been slashed and that's the essential part of the problem about pay. And they've done nothing about it, they've not spoken out, they've delivered the cuts, they've said to government, we can deliver these cuts safely. Uh, so they're very complicit and share the, uh, the, a portion of the blame for where the service is. Uh, so it's, it's a bit laughable when they start to say there are other ways that we could improve pay. They've done nothing to improve pay and it's a sad reflection on, on the current generation of chief officers, unfortunately. Yes, and this suggestion does come through this group, the National Fire Chiefs Council, who are saying that a peer review body might put things right. Now, surprise, surprise, that comes direct from the Home Office and a change that they want to put forward through a white paper. But a peer review body is not a panacea, far from it. I mean, what's your concerns over that suggestion? So a pay review body is, uh, first of all, it's described as independent. It's not independent. It's appointed by the government. The terms of reference are set by the government. The rules uh, are set by the government. And the government can still ignore the recommendations in any case. So a pay review body doesn't mean extra funding. Uh, and we've spoken to uh, colleagues in other unions who are covered by pay review bodies who've highlighted very clearly to us the risks of mm. pay review bodies to the degree that there are a number of unions which either currently or in the past have completely boycotted the discussions with their pay review bodies. So prison officers have done that, teachers have done that, uh, and that's the risk that we face. You hand over negotiations on pay to people who've got nothing to do with the fire service whatsoever, so-called labour market economists and the only thing they're interested in is how many people are leaving the fire service because that's the only case that they believe is viable about why you would get a pay rise. Nothing about the contribution you make, the, nothing about the impacts of inflation on living standards, all of that is largely irrelevant to, to pay review bodies. Uh, it's simply about recruitment and retention which is clearly a factor but uh, it ignores the views of uh, ordinary firefighters. And mo most important point is this, they don't want the views of our members heard through their elected representatives through the trade union. And that's why the National Fire Chiefs Council want this, because they also unfortunately want to weaken the voice of ordinary firefighters in our own industry. Now Matt, also we've heard from the leader of a, a teachers union who's made it clear to us a peer review body also attacks conditions of service. So not just cuts in pay, but also attacks on conditions of service. Yeah, it's staggering that people think that a pay review body is simply going to come up each year and say, OK, you get 3%, 5%, so whatever it might be. Uh, the experience of teachers in, uh, in England has been that the pay review body has also altered the terms and conditions of teachers uh, as part of that process. So saying that actually teachers, for example, have to take on new responsibilities. We know in our own sector that that's a big source yeah. of debate, what's uh, within our role as agreed and what's not in our role as agreed. We know there are battles at local level all across the country on that. And the idea you would hand that over to a, a third party without our own direct negotiations would be a disaster for firefighters. So a big red flag for all, for all members in this a, Absolute big red flag. You've got to ask a question. If the uh, Home Office Inspector and if the Home Office want this, there's a very good reason why we don't want it. No, absolutely. Which takes us on to another issue that's getting um, muted through this paper, that of operational independence. Now, at a time when the FBU is calling on national standards of fire cover, of training and elsewhere, the Home Office want to give Chief Fire Officers some sort of operational independence. And surprise, surprise, once again, 
the National Fire Chiefs Council supports it, in your view? Well, the, the National Fire Chiefs Council support it because it's a power bid by chief officers, to be honest. Uh, and people need to think very carefully on what it means. What it doesn't mean is independence at operational incidents. That's nothing to do, although it sounds that's what it's about, that's not what it's about. It's about giving chiefs greater power to ignore local communities, to ignore the fire brigade union, for example, to change levels of fire cover, to change the numbers of stations, appliances and firefighters, but also to change the work that our members are can be required to do. It's a power bid to force through those sort of changes and again that's why it's a huge risk to our members. Now the union is dealing with this matter but the focus remains firmly on pay? Yes, the, the, clearly the main focus of our campaign is about pay but I think people need to be alive to the background risks. This is a long-term threat to our rights as a union to uh, campaign, negotiate with our members and for our members about the pay that they get but also the work they do for that pay and the white paper poses big threats to us for the long term so it, it, we can't separate the two issues. Pay and the white paper very much go together. Mark, thanks very much indeed.